Sponsored by Dbrand. Customize your smartphone. All right, we got a, a fancy box here. It's from OnePlus. What a surprise. Now, at the time that I'm filming this video, I have not seen this device beyond the leaks and rumors and whatnot. But when you're watching this, the event has happened. So you saw everything. So just keep that in mind. But let's go ahead. Let's have the experience. Let's see what it's all about. Okay. Kind of a cool unboxing experience. Never settle. Ooh, okay. This looks like the OnePlus 7. Over here, we have the new Bullets Wireless, Bullets Wireless 2. It's the reviewer's guide. Go beyond speed. Okay, so this is gonna have all the specs. It's the OnePlus 7 Pro. There's your first look. Oh my goodness, we were right. Snapdragon 855, up to 12 gigs of RAM, UFS 3.0, 6.67 QHD Plus AMOLED. It has a 90 hertz refresh rate display at 516 PPI. There is a night mode. I'm going to test that out, see what that's all about. 48 megapixel triple camera with an ultra wide angle lens and a 3x optical zoom. Warp charge 30, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, dual stereo speakers, Dolby Atmos, haptic vibration, and a 10 layer liquid cooling system. Wow. My model, by the looks of it, Nebula Blue with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. That's a lot of RAM. It's, of course, on par with flagship level devices and when it comes to the processor snapdragon 855 i mean what more can you ask for right now in this day and age okay phone goes there bullets wireless 2 these are of course wireless earbuds okay so the headphones are 109 so they went up in price as well warp charge 30 car chargers so you can bring your warp charge into the car not just at home that's kind of nice to have the warp charge will charge up uh, close to 50% of battery life on the 4,000 milliamp hour battery in about 20 minutes of charge. See that, Jack? The special unbox therapy knife? Little teaser right there. So last year's OnePlus 6T came out at 549 And this one, obviously, OnePlus 7 Pro, it's starting at 669 Whoa! That is a cool blue, actually. It's a matte blue, like a kind of sand blasted glass look. What do we see? We see the camera situation. Triple lens set up on the back, a wide angle lens. We have a zoom lens. This is the thing now. You want to be in the flagship territory, which this one is getting awfully close with the price now at 669 It's very close, for example, to the Galaxy S10e, which I think a lot of people are going to compare this to. And so now it's like, okay, we're going to throw all the camera modules in there to compete at that level. Of course, the OnePlus motto has been flagship killer. I mean, not officially, but that's sort of how people have referred to this device throughout the years. So they try to bring those flagship level specs into a lower price point. And if this one can replicate a flagship experience or spec list, then that might be the move for you. Who knows? USB type C is on the bottom. We also have a speaker unit there. This thing apparently has stereo speakers, which I'm quite curious about. This up here, this is gonna be the pop-up front facing camera, of course. Not the first time we've seen it, but the first time we've seen it on a OnePlus device and the first time we've seen it at this price point. Over here, we have the three-stage switch that you're used to with OnePlus devices. I like that it has a texture to it and allows you to quickly switch between your audio profiles. All right, before I boot that up, also inside the package, warp charger power supply unit. It's, uh, it's a little hefty, but you know what it brings to the table. Very fast charging in the past. OnePlus has had some of the fastest charging, if not the fastest charging devices on the market. So you're definitely willing to make that sacrifice for the speed. Iconic red USB type C cable. And that's that. All right, let's boot this guy up. That is a full screen display. It does have a, a, a slightly, you know, slightly more of a chin and a forehead, which is maybe they designed the wallpaper to hide that a tiny bit but it's really i mean it's relatively insignificant as you can see on this page right here never have we seen a smartphone targeted specifically at the north american market with no notch no weird cutout scenario at the top at this price you don't have to worry about any distraction now you can also sort of see the speaker grill up there it's very subtle maybe jack can get a better look at it there boom right there we got to check out the motorized front facing camera option here so flick this to the front camera and it should pop up there it is very smooth very quiet there i am i doubt the mic even picked up. i don't think the mic picked up anything there but you now have moving parts you have a motor in there 
It, this is an important thing to consider. This is where it gets a bit weird. Like I've been a fan of Face Unlock on OnePlus products for a while now because it's so fast. Now it's not the most secure, but it's really fast. So if you want to make that exchange speed for security, you could, and you could have maybe one of the fastest, if not the fastest face unlock in the game. With the pop-up camera, not only does it take a second to pop out, but now you're utilizing that motor a lot and, and maybe you're more inclined to go with the fingerprint. Maybe this is the compromise. Maybe this is, maybe this is your next phone. I don't know. All right, let's test out these speakers. I kept talking about them, I'm real curious. Just before I pop off a few shots with the camera. Then Apple's AirPods, mm. and they have a slightly different design. I think this will be popular for. There's also Dolby Atmos in here now. It's in dynamic by default. I'm gonna leave it there. You don't need to remember, was that button on the left or on the right? Now, of course, mm, a little, a little muffly, a little bit muffly. Most of the sound is coming out of the lower speaker here. If you cover this speaker grill, you're left with mostly high end out of the other side. So again, it's this thing where manufacturers are saying, okay, this is stereo speakers, but in reality, it's two speakers doing different things. And you don't want something. Well, let's just, I, I just, I gotta get to the bottom of this because I, I, is it my ears? I should, I should know for sure. Huge. And you want something sweat resistant. Well, this has all though nine hours of wireless play, 24 hours with the charging case, sweat components and attributes. So I think I would give the clarity award here to the iPhone. Maybe there's a little bit more low end on the OnePlus, but possibly at the expense of clarity. <laughs> The iPhone wins in the sound department. Try a couple different scenarios. I think the music setting on the Dolby is a bit better, like when you have that engaged versus dynamic mode on the OnePlus. Now, we might as well pop up the camera while we're at it. Okay, so point six, this is what I like. This is cool. This gives you a really wide field of view as Jack can kind of showcase there. Boom, now if I switch to the standard focal range, you can spot the difference. And then of course, three X zoom. What's the difference gonna be? So there's one, there's two, there's three. And this is the best excuse for jamming a bunch of cameras, a bunch of lenses into your smartphone is to give you different focal ranges. And that allows you to have a different perspective and ultimately create different photos as opposed to in the past where like these extra lenses were capturing extra data for various portrait modes and whatnot. This is just immediately useful as you can see. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the plant. So once again, we're gonna go wide we will move to standard and all the way up to 3x zoom. Look at that, it's a wallpaper right there. We're doing wallpapers with the famous fake grass. These results look kind of promising right now. There's still a portrait mode in here. So we have our famous model here and we will focus in here. She's in focus. The plant is blurred. The shoulder, this is what you look for, the edge detection in the portrait mode, and uh, it looks okay. Now there's also a night mode. They're calling it nightscape, and they kind of have to have it these days. Like you gotta have a night mode. Let's go dark. Ooh, it's staying bright. Wow, okay, you know, you can see how dark I am. I'm barely a shadow over here, but the plant is still there. So Jack, you can go ahead and pick that up. And of course you're in that frame. Of course we got Kirk in this frame. Say what's up, Kirk, there you are. It's in here and that's a promising sign. That's a good thing. I think at this price point, pretty much everybody's gonna wanna have it. Now, I can't forget that pop-up fancy front-facing camera. It's a fairly wide selfie situation, as you can see there. HDR mode seems to be engaged here by default, but beauty mode off by default. Uh-oh, not the most friendly there on the contrast, it blew out my cheek. Now keep in mind, I take this same selfie with almost every smartphone that comes across here. So it looks to have a bit of an issue with dynamic range here. Now maybe I can get it zeroed in on my cheek a little bit better. It's very sharp, the beard hair test is there. But again, this cheek is blown out, whichever cheek is facing the light. So. We're gonna have to wait and see how this works in a real world environment, but right now I'm feeling like that software has to be tweaked a bit. Now they claim to have improved the fingerprint scanner on this model. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and register here. Since I think this is how most people are gonna unlock their device. Ooh. 
it's faster. It is absolutely faster. It might be the fastest in display. I think it's the fastest in display I've used. Oof. This technology is finally getting perfected now to the point where you're not going to be thinking about face unlock to the point where you're not going to be thinking about fingerprint scanners. They still have face unlock on this as well if you want to use it. But the question is, how quickly does this front facing camera pop up? Now, in the past, OnePlus face unlock has been crazy fast. I've shown it off before, but now you're dealing with the pop up camera. So let's see how long that takes. Huh. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not as fast as it used to be. Now, keep in mind, that's strictly optical based, right? It's just a front facing camera comparing your face to the image that's stored inside of here. So it's not going to be as secure as other technologies that are out there. And then you take into account now that it's a little bit slower than if you didn't have to pop the camera up. And again, I just feel like you're just going to use the fingerprint. I would turn that off. I don't think I would use that frequently. It does work, but you're going to be stressing out. You'll be using that motor on a front facing camera a lot. The display, QHD plus fluid AMOLED, 6.67 inches. It's a big display, bigger than six and a half inches. So here's the main advantage. I mean, this is why you want the bezel design. There's no distraction. It's all video. And this is the trade off that they're asking you to make. They're saying, okay, your front facing camera is going to pop out. It's going to use a motor. It's going to hide most of the time. In exchange, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get all video all the time. And when you think about video consumption and content consumption on a smartphone, that's the thing that most people do frequently. But I think most of you are spending more time watching video than taking selfies. Could it be a huge issue if the camera didn't come up for me one day? Maybe. And I actually needed it. But this right here is every day. If you're looking at the same frame that I am, that's a lot better than any kind of notch or even a hole punch that I've seen. So the display on this unit, by the way, is 90 Hertz, which is kind of unusual. We've seen some gaming phones with increased Hertz ratings in the past. What this means is, I mean, it's not just for gaming. It's also your input. Like when you're swiping through a list, for example, it's the impression of reactiveness and responsiveness. It's just a little bit more twitchy. When you're using it, you do notice it. I don't think it's the reason to get this device but it is cool to see it in an OLED panel. So this could be an interesting target device for gamers when you combine the OLED display at 90 Hertz along with the stereo speakers and no notch to cover up any element of the gameplay. You could imagine this being a popular choice. Of course, all the RAM and the Snapdragon 855 doesn't hurt either. This is worth noting as well, it's available in other colors. So I have Nebula Blue. It's also gonna be available in Mirror Gray and Almond. Almond kind of looks like a champagne gold. They claim the pop-up camera's elevator mechanism has been tested over 300,000 times. That's a lot. This means if you were to use the camera 150 times a day, you'd still be able to use it for five years. They also say here that the camera module in a fraction of a second will retract if the device is in free fall as detected by the accelerometer and gyroscope. So it's gonna go in there and protect itself like some sort of a turtle in its shell. Turtle in a half shell, turtle power. All right, so what can I say about this device? It's OnePlus continuing their trend upwards, continuing to get more premium with a more premium price tag to match. The bezel -less display, which has been a relatively niche thing. We're going to give you top of the line specs. You just got to pony up 669. Now the X factor on this device is going to be the camera. You saw here in the demo, especially on the front facing, it's like, hmm, maybe something could be done in the software. You saw in the portrait mode, it's like, hmm, are we really at pixel level here? Now the only way for me to get to the bottom of that is to put the SIM card in here and hit it up on the daily, snapping off those photos and seeing what I'm working with. The rear camera looks promising even in this environment. I thought the plant shot, for example, looked pretty good. So here's the thing, if the camera can exceed my expectations in the real world, we're gonna have a serious contender on our hands here. I think there's gonna be a few people upset that OnePlus is demanding more of your dollars 
But this is one of those cases in which I feel like they really are giving you more and they're being more ambitious in what they're delivering. I'm actually a bit more excited for it having it in my hand because what it represents for me is a different, is something different from what the other flagships are doing. I have experimented with bezel-less devices in the past, but never daily drove one. Whether you hate that term or not, it's the best way to describe putting your SIM card in a smartphone. This time around, I'm gonna do it because I'm happy with the software and the OnePlus package in general. I've used OnePlus devices in the past exclusively. So I'm gonna pop my SIM card in here and be excited to do so just because of the fact that the front of the display, it's all display. And there's just not that many devices out there right now offering that opportunity. And definitely not a lot of devices targeting North America at 669 that offer up that opportunity. So I'm gonna be happy to slip my SIM card in here. I'll let you know about the camera later. Uh, but for now, that's the OnePlus 7 Pro. 669 starting price, Nebula Blue, Warp Charge, Snapdragon 655, up to 12 gigs of RAM, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, OLED display at 90 Hertz. It's an interesting package.